The James Webb Space Telescope has provided the closest to date image of interstellar object 3I Atlas. It is alien in composition, its path unconfined, and its activity something never seen before. This is the closest humans have come to seeing something from outside our solar system. On August 6, 2025, Webb sensors targeted 3 Atlas, collecting it with the near infrared spectrograph, NIR spec. Whereas a cometary trace was a fuzzy streak, the telescope showed a clear, high-resolution image with a well-defined nucleus surrounded by a brilliant coma of dust and gas. But it was the chemistry that most surprised astronomers. While typical comets have comas dominated by water vapor, this cometary composition was essentially all carbon dioxide. Webb obtained an unusual CO2 to H2O ratio of 8.1, one of the highest on record, automatically tagging the object as chemically exotic. In addition to CO2, small amounts of carbon monoxide, CO, and carbonyl sulfide, OCS, were found, while water vapor was unexpectedly quenched, perhaps buried under surface dust or hidden deep inside the nucleus. Stranger yet, the emissions were strongly directional, radiating mostly toward the sun in tight beams instead of spreading out randomly. What was more surprising about these discoveries were the object's distance, 3.3 astronomical units from the sun, still beyond the limits where comets tend to get active. Webb's infrared sensitivity enabled researchers to chart specific emissions, apportioning CO2, H2O, and dust into resolvable areas. What would have formerly been a week, Diffuse smear now disclosed intricate plumes, nuanced contours, and high-scale structural features. This was not just a better look, it was a scientific breakthrough. For the first time, an interstellar comet was not only imaged but chemically analyzed and structurally sketched at unprecedented resolution. That kind of accuracy started to challenge new, deeper questions regarding how such an object was possible. All but the majority of comets in our solar system emit water vapor as their chief volatile. In comparison, three Atlas vented carbon dioxide in gross excess. A ratio of CO2 to H2O of 8.1 is not merely atypical, it is actually in direct conflict with centuries-long theories of cometary formation and chemistry. The data implied that this object likely originated outside the CO2 ice line of its original star system in a setting much colder than our comet zones of formation. The other possibility is that its water ice is buried beneath the crust too thick for sunlight to reach and hence unable to undergo sublimation. Either interpretation was indicative of an origin and structure quite alien to anything known. Webb's measurements also caught trace volatiles, providing clues to its thermal evolution and radiation history. Preliminary isotopic signatures, such as the carbon-13 and CO2, were reported, although their interpretation was made difficult by dust interference. Keenly, Webb's infrared sensitivity, spying CO2 at 4.3 micrometers and H2O at 2.7 micrometers, allowed astronomers to distinguish overlapping emissions and map jets in relation to the object's rotation and sun angle. This permitted them to build precise models of its thermal conductivity, sublimation layers, and rotation dynamics. The stakes were huge. Either 3I Atlas developed under circumstances profoundly different from those that produced our solar system, or the laws of ice sublimation and cometary activity are considerably more flexible than researchers had assumed. Webb surveys now allowed for comparison of nearby comets with interstellar comets, and this opened the question of testing whether CO2-dominated chemistry is a galactic standard or an unusual exception. What had started as an image became something much greater, a revolution in our understanding of how comets form and evolve across different star systems. Before Webb, interstellar objects had been seen only in fragments, fuzzy tails, blurry nuclei, and tentative chemical guesses. But three atlas changed everything. What Webb provided wasn't simply a photograph, it was closer to a microscopic scan of a wanderer from another star. 
The picture unveiled a crisply outlined nucleus inside an asymmetrical coma that smoldered with thermal activity. The dust formations and gas plumes were traced in dramatic detail. Visible light telescopes couldn't see it, but Webb's infrared detectors picked up heat, molecular motion, and clear chemical signatures, enabling astronomers to spot areas where CO2 emission was strongest, where dust grew densest, and where water vapor lingered faintly behind. And all of this was measured from over 3.3 astronomical units away, well beyond the range where standard comet models predict such intense activity. Perhaps the most surprising discovery was the coma's irregularity. Gas and dust were not evenly distributed. The side facing the sun erupted with brilliant plumes, while the opposite remained subdued. These asymmetries indicated an interior with extreme internal contrasts, perhaps vents or zoned compositional zones hidden beneath the surface. Even the interface between the nucleus and the coma was unexpected. Rather than a smooth gradation, Webb showed a sharp transition zone, indicative of localized eruptions or cataclysmic uncovering of volatile materials. The telescope's high signal-to-noise ratio made it possible to trace even weak brightness fluctuations and slight spectral line shifts with assurance. A mystery streak on a chart no longer was. Instead, it was a chemical and structural map with quantifiable detail. And with it, the attention turned from asterisk what is it? Asterisk to asterisk where did it originate, and why does it act so? Star. Though its material revealed where it came from, its trajectory revealed as much, three atlas was not of this solar system. When it appeared in observing range, its path was different from the rest. Rather than completing an orbit about the sun, its path was hyperbolic, with an eccentricity larger than one, sure proof that it was merely passing through. Traveling at over 130,000 miles per hour, it crossed the solar system at an angle of only 5 degrees above the ecliptic plane, moving in a retrograde direction against the planet's flow. This edge-on-like approach is rare. The majority of interstellar visitors come in with steep inclines, diving from above or below the plane. In contrast, three atlas seem to cut straight across, crossing the tracks of several planets. Its predicted path made the object's trajectory all the more fascinating. By October, it would be close enough to Mars, glide past Venus, cross the plane of Earth's orbit, and then fly by Jupiter before passing into interstellar space for a second time. None of them represented an impact threat, but the coincidence was statistically unlikely. Models calculated that the probability of an interstellar object encountering three big planets in a row by accident was fewer than 1 in 20,000. As Webb tracked it further, tiny deviations in speed and direction appeared, movements too gradual to be accounted for by gravity alone. They corresponded with the orientation of its plume of CO2, suggesting outgassing itself was generating detectable thrust. Though such phenomena are familiar in cometary science, only infrequently are they seen so definitively. The steady, sunward jet that drove these changes indicated something beyond stochastic sublimation. To most, it spoke of guided acceleration. Webb was not merely following a racing rock, it was observing an object dynamically adjusting its trajectory on the fly. This changed 3i Atlas from passive passenger to something that interactively engaged with its surroundings. Its journey through our solar system was not the chaotic tumble of a typical comet, but a passage marked by surprising precision. Undefined scientists now faced a fleeting opportunity, a narrow window in which to observe, analyze, and decode the mysteries of this interstellar visitor before it disappeared forever into the dark unknown from which it came.